I'm Rob Bell, and I'm passionate about finding out how stuff works. From major landmarks to motor transport, just what are the behind-the-scenes secrets that keep us entertained and keep us on the move? Well, I'm on a mission to find out. This is one of the most iconic bridges in the world, slap bang in the centre of London. In fact, it's two bridges in one, part bascule or raising bridge and part suspension bridge. It's named after its prestigious neighbour, the Tower of London. Welcome to Tower Bridge. Opened in 1894, this unusual looking span draws in half a million visitors a year. Many more millions pass by or over it during their daily life. This bridge is steeped in London history. One of the earliest design briefs was to construct a bridge that was passable by tall ships. With that in mind, the bascule movable design was selected and it was powered by steam. Yeah, we'll go in here, Rob. Charlie Harrison is one of the bridge's senior technical officers and offered to show me behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is kind of proper old school. I just want to start pulling levers and everything. Well, feel free to try that one there. And every time the bridge went up, would it always go right up? No, not necessarily. The only time we do a full lift now is for the size of the vessel or for royalty. Otherwise, we just lift just to give adequate clearance because the longer it's up, the more disruption to the busy traffic around the bridge. So even if the Queen's coming through in a little rowing boat, it still has to go all the way up? She's come through on a barge. There's not much bigger than a rowing boat. I've seen it happen. The bridge goes up before. Well, quite right in my book. Yeah. When this bridge was built, steam power kept London moving. Just south of the bridge, you can still see the old engines that use steam to pump water to the drive mechanism used to lift the bridge. So steam, moving the wheel to move water to move the bridge. To move another machine to move the bridge, yeah. Below road level, under the bascules, are the engines that took the pressurised water and turned it into a rotary motion that drives the shaft to raise the bridge. So this machine really is all about using that water pressure to create a rotary motion. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And this modern engine here does the exactly same thing? Exactly the same. A small unit, but does exactly the same. Well, it's quite beautiful seeing the old and the new here right next to each other. Personally, I know which one I prefer. OK, well, you can come and polish it then. Next stop on the tour are the so-called bascule chambers, which are dug into the base of each tower. <laughs> Look at this! It's enormous. From the road, you'd have no idea this was all down here. No, no. It's such a vast space. People don't realise when the road surface raises, it can only be accomplished by the tail end of the bridge, the counterbalance weight, which is a big white box above your head. Yeah. That needs to descend to somewhere, so it makes its way through the bascule chamber. And when on a full bridge lift, it will end up somewhere just in front of that wall there. So if they were to raise the bridge right now, we get squashed by this as it came down. We would get squashed, yes, yes. OK. But that's not going to happen. You've got your radio on no, you, is it? No, I'm the driver. You're safe. OK, good. We were at the right man. From the very bottom to the very top, Tower Bridge keeps one more secret up its sleeve. Amazing mid-river oh, wow. rooftop views of London. Because the site of Tower Bridge is quite familiar to us now, it's easy to think that the engineering solution is quite obvious. But back in the 19th century, it would have taken some of the most creative and forward-thinking engineers of their time. Up here, we really are standing on the shoulders of engineering's giants. 